For more, we're joined by John Curtis, who's Professor of Politics at the University of Strathclyde. Just a bit more on the investigation then, John. Thank you for being with us. Uh, what was this money meant for and what was it allegedly used for? Well, I should say straight away, we have to be careful how much we can say here. Scottish law is very tight about what we can uh, say or broadcast um, in respect of uh, investigations that are currently under place. But as I understand it, effectively, when uh, Nicola Sturgeon in March 2017 uh, said that she wanted to hold another referendum because uh, of the way in which the UK government was pursuing Brexit, it was heading towards what she regarded as a hard Brexit, uh, a campaign was started on a website to try and raise uh, money for that cause. However, uh, there, the, the question that's been raised subsequently is that in accounts filed by the SNP uh, after that event, indeed after the general election that took place in June 2017, uh, the amount of money the SNP had to hand seemed to be less than the amount of money that it was thought to be raised. So that is seem, as we understand it, is roughly what it's about. But I think beyond that, uh, there isn't much we can say. I think all that we can learn from today is that the police have evidently decided that they have not brought their investigation to a conclusion to our, one, in one direction or the other. Miss Sturgeon, of course, is the third of the three people uh, who signed the SNP's accounts under uh, the law governing political parties in the UK. So one was indeed was her husband, Peter Murrell, who was arrested back at the beginning of April. And that's when the story first broke as a major problem for the SNP. Subsequently, the uh, then treasurer of the SNP, Colin Beattie, was arrested. And now Nicola Sturgeon uh, has also been arrested. In a sense, given that she was one of the, the signatories and the other two have already uh, uh, been arrested, it wasn't really that much of a surprise that eventually the police would also want to question her. So it's more trouble for the SNP. What do you think might await them at the next general election? Well, here I think we have to be very careful um, because um, actually you gave a slightly misleading impression of, it, of its position um, at the beginning of this item. So support for independence has not actually fallen either in the wake of uh, Nicola Sturgeon's decision to resign or indeed the, since the arrest of, of Peter Murrell. Uh, it currently stands on average in the polls at 48 percent, which is more or less what it has, it has been really since about the beginning of 2021. It is true that support for the SNP has fallen uh, since the resignation of uh, Nicola Sturgeon. It was then running at 43% for the next UK general election. It's now standing at 38%. But all of that decline occurred during the SNP leadership contest um, and was registered in the polls immediately after Humza Yusuf, her successors, uh, uh, a successful election, it has not declined further since. since. So one has to say, so far as public opinion is concerned, uh, despite the drama, despite the headlines, it's not had any discernible impact. Now, that doesn't mean to say that it isn't bad news for Humza Yusuf. Because hum, the SNP lost ground during the leadership contest, because Mr. Yusuf himself is not particularly popular, there are doubts about his competence, doubts that are to some degree shared by people who voted for the SNP in the past. He badly needs to try and get his party on the front foot. He needs to be able to grab the political initiative and persuade people in Scotland that he is indeed capable of being an effective first minister. That is very difficult to do against the backdrop of this continuing investigation and the occasional, occasional flare up into the headlines as this occurred today. So just in terms of the independence bid then, if uh, do you see it still being possible that the SNP uh, will eventually be able to uh, rally this charge once more? Will it have to form, um, fall to another potential party or perhaps a new, uh, a new uh, group of parties? Um, well, at the moment, there's no immediate prospect of any change in the political parties that are going, are going to represent uh, nationalism. Um, the SNP are holding a convention to later this month in which they're going to revisit the question of how they might attempt to pursue independence, given uh, the rejection uh, by the UK Supreme Court back, back in November of the idea that the Scottish Parliament could hold one on its uh, own uh, volition. 
But in truth, one of the things that came out of the SNP leadership contest was the realization that, in fact, the SNP would not be sensible to try to pursue an independence referendum until support for independence is well and truly above 50% on a consistent basis. In other words, you only want to hold a referendum when you know you're going to win. And I think the real question facing the SNP is whether or not they can move the level of support for independence above 50%. And that essentially is about persuading people in Scotland that they are be will be better off inside the European Union, albeit outside the UK, than being inside the UK and outside the European Union. Uh, and that is a debate that yet really is yet to take place in Scotland. John Curtis, Thank Professor you. of Politics at the University of Strathclyde. Thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome.